Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I install the interior girts into the corner. On the previous video, I showed you how I made this story pole and how I got my benchmark and all that other stuff. Now, what I've found is that one of these corner brackets, this is what I'm gonna use. The girt will come back to here, and then this corner bracket will be straight up from here, so the corner bracket will be kinda like there. But anyways, this is nice and thin, so what I'm doing is just putting this on my line like that, and then transferring a line onto the column here and the column in most places has tape on it so i'm using a marker so first thing i got to do is mark all of the bottoms of the girts then once that's done i'll show you how i install the girts okay i have all of my girts located you can see them here that's a mistake right there got it scribbled out and benchmark there this is where the girt goes. Now what I'm gonna do is cut a bunch of wood blocks, well, not that many, and screw them right below where that line is. That way I can pull the girt into place exactly where it needs to go. And if the girt has a bow in it or a twist, I can pull it straight again and get it dead where it needs to go. But in order to do that, I have to move all of this stuff for just a second and get my chop saw out of there. Got some stuff on the floor too. It won't be that bad. Then I think I'll leave the chop saw right by the door because I'm gonna have a lot of girts to cut in the coming weeks. Okay, let's pull that out and get these girts cut. Oh, and the majority of the girts here are going to be 16 feet, roughly 16 feet. They're going to go right from the middle of this stud right here, all the way over to the far side of this stud right here. But in the window area, they're going to stop right here. So this will go from the same place over there and then stop right here. And then it'll get nothing here until I do this bay. Once that bay's done, it's going to start right here and go to here. And then it's going to have a shorter one going to the end right there. You'll see why when I do that. But for now, let's get that saw out of there and get these girts cut. Okay, I have everything set up. I can't go out there with the camera because it's kind of windy out there. It's going to start raining in a little bit, so I got to hurry up. What I always do is trim one end square, then turn it around, measure, get my length, and then cut the other end. You don't have to do that. You can probably just cut one end, but being a cabinet maker, I always do it that way. What I have here I took the first five 16 footers and this one and the one that's on there have a real fairly pronounced bow to them. That's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. I'll be pulling it straight on the wall, but I wanted to keep those separate so I don't put two in a row when I'm going up the wall. And then these three, 
are really straight. So once they're all put in, they should balance each other out. This one is the 10 footer for going up to the window there. And it's going to be kind of a waste of lumber, but it is what it is. That right there, that two by six material, that's going to be the cleats. I'm going to cut three of them out of that. And that's about it. Let's get this stuff cut and start getting it put in. Hopefully we can beat the rain and get the ones for this wall cut, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yikes, you can see the wind up in the tops of those trees. It's really windy out there and in the low 30s. So it's probably like 10 degrees with the wind chill out there. My hands are freezing. I'm gonna let my hands warm up a little bit and we'll get some screws in these cleats, put those on. I actually had to cut a different board I thought I needed one of the little over eight footers right here, and I actually needed two. Now that I corrected this line that was too low, which would have went all the way through, this one stops short as well. I think I'm gonna frame the window out a little more, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Today, I need to focus on this corner here.
like I said earlier, this top girt is just butted up against the truss there, but we have no truss at the end. So let me show you how I did that. What I did was marked the bottom of this end truss, marked it around, got a level line back, and then once I got those two in, I pulled this one down to the line and fastened it in place. Really nice. I had to pull in my tools there because I could hear a tiny little tinkling on the roof and sure enough it was raining out there but that only lasted a couple minutes. It's supposed to rain tonight and I believe snow tomorrow. I mentioned it before I put the girts on but it's a lot more visible now. These girts come a little bit shy of the window. There's going to be inch and a half thick insulation right here, foam insulation, and it's going to be the same thing on the other side. I just can't put that stuff in until I put my duct work through the wall over there. The last thing I got to do today, I'm kind of running out of time, is get a plumb line from the outside of this grade board up these girts and another one on the inside. The inside one is where the insulation's gonna come to, and the outside one is where the girt's gonna come to. This is what I'm gonna do when I get my girts cut for that. First, I gotta put the insulation in just like this, then I'll cut the girts, and at the end of the girts, I'll put this on, get it screwed in place, and then I'll take my girts over and they're gonna go something like that. So let me go grab my big Stabilo level and we'll get them plumb lines on here. Okay, I used my Stabilo plate to plate level to get my plumb line here, but if you don't have one of them, you could just set up a string line right at the bottom there and then mark out from the top and snap a line. And these inside lines, I just measured over and then took my combination square and drew that in. So pretty simple either way. After looking at this for a while, I kind of figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a piece of foam that is from here all the way to the outside. And I'm going to put it right at the front line. I'll notch for these girts and I think I'll put it in in like four foot sections. That would be three sections. It's both gonna add difficulty and remove difficulty. With that in there, then I'll be able to put my insulation in this bay and tape it right to this edge. Otherwise, I have this kind of in and out action going here and it's really gonna be hard getting this first piece of fiberglass in there. Yeah, this is going to be a real challenging bay here, not only because of this here, but there's a piece of the fiberglass that's going to have to be cut in half because this is nine feet right here. So I'm going to guess this is going to take the whole day because I also have to do the girts on this. So when I do that video, I'm going to do all of the insulation and then go right in and do the girts as well. That'll finish up this entire corner then I can move on to all this stuff and finish up this bay. The mini split will be here in, what, two days? And I already have this. I'm running to town tomorrow for some more parts for this. I believe I'm going to mount it using this angle iron with the holes in it. I forget what that's called. It's got a specific name, but can't remember it right now combination of that and its own mounting brackets and the unit itself I'm going to try to get it dead center right here and then yeah it'd kind of be nice to have the mini split over the window but I think the mini split's going to have to go over here but like I said this stuff is going to come first so if you want to see me finish up this corner make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.